Hello, welcome to this new Hostify video. My name's Alex. Today we're gonna we're gonna look at the NanoStation AC, uh, the initial setup of the device and getting it adopted to UISP. So the NanoStation AC was launched a little while ago as the sort of the successor to the original NanoStation M5. That device was very popular with CCTV installers um, due to its uh, low profile form factor and it could be tie strapped to a um, a lighting pole, for example. It also has features two Ethernet ports. Uh, one port for PoE out and one port for PoE in. And what's nice about the NanoStation AC model is that you can either power it from 24 volts passive, which is traditionally used on all the MX devices in the past, or you can power the NanoStation with 82.3 AF or AT active PoE. And what's what's great as well is that the secondary port will relay whatever power source the NanoStation is powered from. So if you power it with 24 volts passive, you'll get 24 volts passive on the output port. If you power it with active, you'll get active on the out output port. But the the act the secondary port once it's enabled won't be active. It'll be it'll be sort of passive 48 volts in that sort of sense, which will power any camera you need or anything. So we're going to look at the NanoStation AC, the hardware, and we're going to also going to look at set getting the device adopted to USP and getting it set up as well, and what that process is like once getting logged into the uh, local GUI and that sort of thing. The NanoStation AC is used by WISPs and CCTV installers, point-to-point -point use cases between buildings. It's a cost-effective way to get a wired connection between buildings or um, businesses on a business park, um, and it's a popular device that Ubiquiti has launched. So as I mentioned, the NanoStation AC can be powered by 24 volts passive or by active PoE, AF and AT, and it supports PoE pass-through. So one thing that um, people don't tend to use is having a camera on the second port uh, you can either power a G3 bullet because they take 24 volts and active, or you can even power a G4 bullet using the AF or AT output. So logging to the NanoStation AC is pretty simple. It's got a default IP address of 192.168.1.20. Um, you can either power it from a PoE injector or a PoE switch. You just need to configure your network adapter on your laptop with a static IP address on the 192.168.1 subnet and log into the uh, default GUI. So we're going to explore that now and we'll see what the hardware's like. So the NanoStation AC doesn't really look like the NanoStation M5 it replaces. That does, that product had a very squared off design. This one's very rounded and quite more modern. And on the back, got NanoStation AC. Ports flap at the bottom. So there's two sockets in there. Secondary for PoE out and the main for PoE in. Reset switch as well. So I'm just going to power up the NanoStation AC, so the PoE goes into the main port there. Once the NanoStation is powered on, there's some LED lights on the right hand side. Power for power, and then there's two link status lights, one for main and one for secondary as well. So once you've got the NanoStation AC plugged in, uh, log into the default IP address of 192.168.1.20. Um, mine's a little bit different here because of the way I've got things set up, but you'll be able to get to the GUI via the default IP. You choose the country, mine is United Kingdom. Choose a language, agree to terms, press continue. Put a, a good password in and press continue. Say no for that. So I've logged into the NanoStation AC. First thing we're going to do is log into the actual IP address of the device. So it's picked up DHCP, but for some reason um, it's not allowing me to get in via that IP, but we're fine now. So my UXD Pro is, is giving the NanoStation AC uh, some DHCP. Uh, we're logged in properly now. So to add this to Hostify, so I'm logged into my Hostify controller, go to Devices, and then copy UISP clip to clipboard, and then we'll go back to the NanoStation AC, go up to this UISP button up here. It says USB Management on or off, and we'll add the key. Key is there. And then we'll turn, it turns it, turns the management on by itself. And CPU is maxing out as it does that. But after about 30 seconds or so, um, it will all come back to normal. And then the nano station will go orange, this button here, to indicate that it's connecting out to UISP. So it's found the nano station AC. There we go. So the nano station AC is the CPU has gone back to normal. It's now green. And we can adopt. We can adopt and assign the nano station. So I can assign this to my hostify site. 
it's going to be online now. And there you go. We can view that the NAS station AC is working. I'm going to switch this back to the old GUI just to show you what the GUI looks like for the NAS station AC. So we've got a wireless and the NAS station. And like the USB devices, it's got its own little sidebar uh, with the link capacity, topology, um, maintenance mode, generate password, that sort of thing. There's also a terminal feature. So you can, like the USB devices, you can log into the NAS station remotely. Uh, you can even restart it, forget it. Um, it will take backups, you can up, update the firmware. So this nano station isn't actually due an update, just the older versions are here. It's actually up to date. Um, it can change the site it's on, change the name, and that sort of thing. Okay, thank you for watching this Hostify video. My name's Alex. If you needed more information, go to hostify.com. The knowledge base article for this video will be linked below in the video description. Uh, it's got all the information you need, the screenshots, instructions, how to log into the nano station remotely. And it's also got in information on how to adopt the nano station to Hostify. For any UISP or Unify support, contact Hostify at support at hostify.com or visit our website at hostify.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. My name is Alex, thank you for watching this Hostify video and we'll see you again next time.